Welcome to the SUP Podcast. This is another two-part episode. You guys know I love to make sure that you guys know this is a two-parter up top. Um, off top, go to iTunes, give us a five-star review, uh, go to the subreddit, r slash sub podcast, go to Patreon. Uh, we're going to start having real fucking a lot of content on the Patreon. Uh, it's five bucks a month, guys. It's basically a cup of coffee. I mean, it's an expensive cup of coffee, but... That's what coffee is if you go to a coffee shop now. So just give us a cup of coffee a month. You'll be able to get all this stuff first uh, and exclusively. And, uh, you know, we fucking appreciate you guys so much. Uh, you guys are the best fans in the world. Just make sure you fucking review us if you haven't already. Like us. Subscribe. Tell somebody about the podcast. Tell your friends uh, that uh, me and Lawrence are cool guys. <laughs> that we're cool people that should be uh, respected and listened <laughs> to. <laughs> Uh, when Lawrence isn't here, there's <laughs> I just get unchecked and I say whatever I want. Uh, this is Chris, episode number 75, part one. Here we go. Here it is, right now, and boom. Yeah, man. Yeah, buddy. Sup, podcast in the building. It's in epi- the house. In the house. It's episode number 75. 75, baby. What do you got on 75, L? I I got nothing. I got no... Uh, I got nothing on 75. I don't have a a player. Uh, I don't can't think of anything. There's a lot of offensive linemen that are probably 75. <laughs> yep, that's what I would have put it. Yep, uh, that's an NFL number. Um, that is an NFL number. Yeah, you don't see basketball jerseys. Basketball is usually low. Uh, football is usually kind of high, except for the quarterback. Mm-hmm. Uh, baseball is all over the place. Yeah, baseball is all over the place. Um, <laughs> Baseball's over the place. I'm trying. I'm trying to look right now and see who seven. I think Kev, was it Kevin Green? No. Now you got me fucked. Now I'm rambling about who's number. C. See, Chris, you're doing this <laughs> setting me up, man. Welcome to Sub Podcast. I am Chris Cheney, one of your hosts. Uh, across from me, the guy who's looking for a 75 uniform, uh, Lawrence Deloach. Uh, he's got a kombucha here. You know, he's already he's ripping rare to go here. Merlin Olson, number 75, and, and Mean Joe Green. It was 75. So uh, that's, uh, see, I fucking, did I, I, I said Joe, I don't know if I said Joe Green. Whatever, we'll figure it out. So <laughs> episode 75, we got a lot of things to talk about. Speaking of uh, Mean Joe Green and NFL, NFL season starting soon. We got training camp going on. Oh, we're just going to get right into but this. But fuck that, bigger than <laughs> all of that, we got J. Uh, Callan Kaepernick, uh, I stand for you until the money comes calling me, and then I'm selling out all my fellow black men. Z, I don't really mess with you right now, even though I don't know how much you sold us out for, and if I find out how much you sold us out for, if it's a good amount, then maybe I'll understand. Well, wait, do you think he's really selling out like that? Like, do you think that, that this partnership, quote-unquote, which I don't know what that even means. I, it, like, does he own part of the NFL now? Like, what is a partnership anymore? I don't really understand. Um, Cause it seems like they just hired him the way that like Gucci hired their like diversity uh, coach or whatever the fuck back when that that shit happened the blackface. Well, it's interesting, man, because I you know like a lot of people are and, and I agree when they're like, "Yo, Jay Z is pulling the same shit he pulled with the Brooklyn Nets." Where he was like, "I'm I'm I'm a part I'm an owner." Yeah. And it was like, dude, like and, I, and granted, you know, point zero 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 one or whatever Jay owned was significant yeah but it's like how much is he really owning is this like a you know like a face you know like a well he didn't really get did he get a lot out of that net deal i think he just got a team into brooklyn that was basically like the whole thing right mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. but he's interested in being an owner um but is he betraying everybody that he was standing with or is he trying to get a seat at the table so he could help sort of regulate he ain't helping no one but himself <laughs> Jay Z ain't helping no one but himself, and I ain't even mad. All right, ask Dame Dash how much Jay Z helped him out. No, I love Jay. I mean, honestly, no. As a dude from Brooklyn, I love Jay. Um, you know, I feel like uh, Jermaine Dupri was upset about it because he was like he was trying to get the same deal, and Jay told him to fall back. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, don't do this, man. You know, I, I think that's the only thing that um, I don't know. It, it's just so interesting because also his place with Puma. Mm-hmm. And his uh, sporting agency, Rock Nation, he's becoming a monopoly. He's like the Black Disney dude. Like, how is he having so many fucking hands and all this shit? And it's all, the, you know what I mean? Like, so you got the Puma thing. So you had a Puma basketball, 
and then you have your own sporting agency. Now you're um, kind of saying, fuck you, Cap and Nike, and now you're going to partner. If he doesn't make Puma like one of the fucking forefronts of, of uh, performance wear mm -hmm. through the, all this shit, then he's definitely fucked up. Well, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, when and also when they say he will reportedly become a part owner of a team. Yeah. What team is he getting? Is it like so they just like I, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like it's like you know. just like the things that I've read. It just says that he has significant ownership interest. Like, yeah, who doesn't want to fucking own a, a team of anything? What yeah. Ha what happens is, and a lot of the time it's like um, this is the, the to me the equip. What Jay Z did is the equivalent of a dude saying, "Yo, this chick is ugly. Yo, do, don't date this ugly chick." Right? Uh -huh. And then he turns around and ends up marrying yeah, this, he, the chick that he's like, "This chick is ugly." Yeah. Because it's like you, you, you like I remember Travis Scott did the Super Bowl. And Jay was like, nah, bro, like, what are you, like, you know, what are you guys doing? Like, the NFL is very, like, you know, what they're doing to Brother Colin is, is absurd. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, now Jay is like, well, hey, you know, and like I said, this is not a, this is not something that, you know, this is not a non-Jay-Z move, if that makes sense. No, it's totally, if you look at throughout Jay-Z's career, yeah, like, you already brought up Dame. Like, he's done this with everything he's ever touched, pretty mm -hmm. much, for the most part. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean... <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, I think that him at the meetings, mm -hmm. I think, will help sort of uh, remove the need to do things like Neil. I think he'll help in the long run. Yeah. Um, and I also do want to see a Jay-Z halftime show. I think it's going to be way better than anything else that we've had in the past. Um, well, I think I think if you do it, I think, honestly, and I'm going to say this, the NFL is not really big on rappers uh, during the, or you know like urban acts during, yeah and when I say doing a longer set and when yeah. I say like uh, who did uh, uh, the dude with all the tattoos uh, I forgot his name um, oh Adam Levine Is that Adam, I think it was yeah. Levine did the Super Bowl yeah you know you, you he was the main act yeah, and then Travis Scott like was like uh, he just did a half a sickle he did mode. half a sickle <laughs> mode, and and then uh, they bought out the dude from Outcast with Big Boy. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, Big Boy. And um and and I think so. I I don't know I don't know what the plan is here. It's very interesting, man, because you know on the heels of the NFL season starting and and less than a month, you know we're we're literally talking about three weeks away. I think the season is starting. Yeah, and for this to come out. It, it definitely reeks of something I, I, that I'm I'm just weird about because everyone's like, well, maybe he's gonna get Kaepernick a job, and Cap hasn't been in the NFL for I think three seasons at this point. Yeah, it's three year the three year anniversary three was year like the other day, yeah, yeah. and or something like something three year mark. And it just re like I, people are like, well, he can get a, he may be able to get him a job. It is rare, it is very rare for a quarterback to be out of the game for, for that long. for that long. Yeah. And then come back. I mean, the only guy in, that I can, off the top of my head, think of was Michael Vick, who, yep. who was out of the game, and then he came back and was able to, you know, at least perform. Well, he, I mean, he out, he, he outperformed. He got himself another hundred million dollar deal. Yeah, yeah, for but sure. But what I'm saying is like this. I, I just feel like you know, and once again, I mean, there was, I mean, Colin Kaepernick took the NFL to court. And one, well, I don't. One's not a good. He's he settled. I don't know settled. what to settle. Uh, that's so, a W in my book. You so know basically, what, I mean? what they're saying is, hey, bro, yeah, there was some collusion to keep you out the NFL. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And now, and now we got Jay Z, who arguably is the biggest rapper, you know, and one of the biggest pop icon, pop culture icons, and he is teaming with you know people who he literally was quote unquote against. So it's like. Well, you know what was interesting, too? Because I don't know if you saw the clip of uh, the media asking him, like the post, whatever, like the deal was announced and they mm -hmm. caught up with him. I don't know uh, exactly what outlet it was. I just saw a clip of it. And <laughs> they were like, so what gives, kind of? And then he just did the thing where he's like, uh, <laughs> you never yeah. want to start out like that. Yeah. He had nothing prepared. He was kind of like, uh, I mean, it's not about the kneel, and we all know what we were kneeling about, right? And he's like not even saying why. Like, you know, when you don't know something, so you ask somebody else, like it's an obvious question, like answer, you're like, you know why we were kneeling, right? You know why. Yeah, I, I mean, I think we're we not doing that. No, you know what I mean. I think you yeah, know. Move on. Everyone is. Uh, everyone is. Uh, well, not everyone, but a lot of people are aware of the reason why guys were yeah. kneeling. You know, and, yeah, and yeah. They had to do a lot of brutality and yeah, social know, injustice towards they, African Americans. Uh, Americans yeah. yeah, I mean the white the whitewashed media made it about the troops. 
Yes. Well, yeah. I mean, when you know you have certain people, the president and a lot of people yeah. going at. Uh, the players for something that they're not that's not what they're protesting so I mean I think Jay knows it I think what happened was you had a lot of uh, black people who were like yo dude this is fucked up you know what's going on how how do these owners because you gotta realize man the NFL it's not like the NBA Mm -mm. NBA is like a bunch of black dudes it's you know and and you, you are the best players are black yes so you got LeBron James and and Dwayne Wade and and you know Carmelo Anthony and and all these guys who are well most of the good, the better well known athletes are black from the NFL too. It's just usually like white quarterbacks and occasionally you got like uh, well, well, the Patriots because Tom Brady can throw it to them. Well, like the, you know you get the, the tight well, ends. That's and, a well that's a big thing though. Yeah, that's a huge thing because a lot of the time the face of the franchise is a quarterback. Yeah, and when you start looking at faces of the NFL in the past decade is like Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, you know, guys like that. Yep. So Drew Brees, yeah. Drew Brees. Everyone yeah, those all all those guys had like a moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I'm saying is and, and those guys aren't wearing Black Lives Matters t shirts like LeBron James is able to do. You yeah, understand like what I'm in saying? the warm up stuff. Yeah, it's Steph very Curry, different. It's, yeah. it's different. And and then you have a you have a commissioner in the NBA and Adam Silver who is like uh yeah, I stick with my players. If this is what they want to do, boom. When the NFL is more like, you know, Goodell is like, fuck, like, you know, like I'm I'm supposedly working with the owners, you know, I'm supposed to yeah. Jerry Jones is, you know, my boss, you know, yeah. these guys, these these billionaire white dudes. So it, it's a it's a crazy dynamic. But um, like I said, you know, I I, I can't be mad. I, w- I would be more like it's whatever if Jay didn't really go about being on some nah fuck that don't don't dance don't do this yeah and, it is kind of weird that he he did yeah you know the, the uh, that chick is ugly don't fuck her um, yeah it's, to, it's a total that's don't. a great way to put it yeah and you pull up to the party with her and you're like well you know I saw some things in her that I was like well she's beautiful like inside like you know what I mean you like yo dude you fucking set me up bro <laughs> yo don't do that <laughs> don't do that you know no it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you no. know. So, so yeah, so I think um but you know, once again, we'll see because I'm sure, you know, we're we're still gonna have players kneeling and I, I don't think that's going to stop. No. And we're gonna have you know, some guys who you know, once again, I mean this is the NFL's is to me a southern game, bro. It's still a southern game. Yeah, when I say definitely. Southern, it's no, the South definitely cares more about football than we do up, up north. I mean, I care about football. I huh? know you do, but yeah, down there, they're really like they're really into it, bro. Bro, they they have like arenas for high schoolers. Yeah, you know what I'm I mean, saying, that yeah. shit is ridiculous. Yeah, you go to certain towns. I mean, bro, on Friday night, these high school kids, the town is shut down. Yeah, there's more people that care about. I think now uh, this is probably gonna sound stupid now that I say it, but high school football than they do the WNBA. Like, there's probably more fans of high school football. <laughs> Than women's basketball in, in certain states, yeah. yeah. I think overall, though, like, and if you talk about like the U.S., like, because the South, the presence there for football is so strong. Yeah, I and mean, nobody fucking cares about the WNBA. Whoa, disclaimer: that's what Chris feels. <laughs> Lawrence cares about the WNBA. What's your right? favorite team? Los Angeles Sparks. Really? Yeah. All right. What's yeah. the team for Maine? Maine. I don't know. Red Claw. Not the Red Claws. I don't know. Oh, all right. Well, is there even a team in Maine? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, mean, just, I don't even think there's a main <laughs> fucking. I don't think there's a main team, bro. No, it's probably not. Usually, uh, Boston like gets Vermont, uh, New Hampshire, Maine, Rhode Island, and uh, that that whole little area and Mass. Well, thanks for trying to trick me. I'm like Chris. <laughs> I don't think. Yeah, I don't think Maine has a, a team. But um, no, I I can understand. I mean, like I said, bro, it's the uh, football is it's a it's a crazy sport, and um. And I think, but back to what we were saying about Jay Z, man. Um, I think people got to really sit back and kind of see where this plays. I know, you know, it's easy to be like, "No, fuck that," but let it. Let's see where it plays out. Yeah, I mean, we got at least have the season start and to see what actually comes about of him signing that contract. There you go, man. I mean, I do think the halftime show is going to be good. If it's not good, then I, I lose all faith. Uh, well, I mean, we don't know who's <laughs> performing yet, bro. We don't even know if Jay Z is going to perform. So <laughs> he's definitely not going to perform. But you know, wait, why? I mean, speaking of Jay Z, <laughs> speaking of Jay Z, yeah. Kanye West is uh, 
in the news again uh, for uh, re-releasing. Uh, we're, just, we're just gonna get off this Jay Z thing because I think we've we've, we've we done t- it for 14 minutes. And I'm sure I'm sure our listeners are like, "Hey guys, get the get to the fucking close." That's what we listen to you guys for, not Jay Z talk. But we got some Kanye West talk. Yeah, he re-released the Wave Runners yesterday. Yes, he did. He he has a bunch of stuff going on. He's got a lot of stuff. The Wave Runners, uh, Alien, the the uh, code name Alien, I guess, but the V threes of the three fifty came out. Okay. And then um, I guess he was up in the Rick and Morty studio working on his episode. So he's got a bunch of stuff going on. He's got a lot of things going on, man. He's got more. He's got Wave Runners. And like you said, he's got three fifties. It doesn't matter. Kanye is gonna give every he. Here's the thing. Yesterday, August seventeenth, he released the them. Um, and then a couple of days earlier on his website, they released uh, the Wave Runners too. So he had yeah. two Wave Runner releases basically yeah. in in five six days. Did you get a pair? Did you try for anything? Nope, I ain't fucking with the Adidas line. Yeah, I, mean, I didn't really care. I mean, I uh, I mean it's cool. A bunch of people that wanted that OG colorway got it. Um, I saw Twitter kind of like copping some W's on there. Which now anything uh, Adidas and Kanye related, you're probably gonna get a W. I mean, not not always, but yeah. No, a but lot I mean, of, for the most part, you know what I mean. Like, if you really, really want a pair of that, you should you can get it. Um, but then, yeah, those three fifties are insane. And then, yo, dude, he has this fucking like sweater that the guy drew on. He went, like went up there, and the guys who drew Rick, draw Rick and Morty, I forget their names. Uh, illustrator, let me see, Justin Knoll, I guess that guy. But he's like drawing on his blank sweater for Kanye. Really? Yeah, kind of cool. That's a fucking good piece right there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it, in all in all, it's actually an ugly sweater, ugly looking sweater. But the guy that fucking drew on it in the studio, he walked out wearing it. That's pretty tight. That's, that that does look fire. I mean, not nah, it looks fire, but it looks like something Kanye would definitely wear one of one for Jesus. Yeah, he do the fucking homeless shit. I'm trying to. Uh, but did you see the uh, 350 V uh, V3? Yes, I did. They're supposed to be releasing uh, like it's like a white and gray colorway. Am I correct? Yes. Yes, I did. They the main picture that has been going around uh, is definitely photoshopped, which I, I've ranted about this before. Like I don't know how like official images get fo- like are are Photoshop pieces and not the actual product. But I, look, I, apparently this is it. Um, it's just more of like a how do I describe this? It's like a, just a more natural looking chew. Like it looks. What like the it, fuck is natural about no, that? No, no, no. <laughs> like, like the uh, the inspiration is is taken from natural forms, I think, more than like the the other ones. I mean, if the shit looks like that. I don't know how natural it is, but all right. No, I'm saying like the inspiration for the look of it, I think, was taken from more natural looking things than because this is like really uh like ethereal looking in its upper structure. Like it looks, uh, aliens a good way to put it, I guess. Mm-hmm. It looks it looks insane. It doesn't look normal. It does look insane. Yeah, I, I don't mean, know if I'm fucking with these at all. Yeah, I don't think. I mean, like I said, bro, it's gonna take a lot for me to purchase a, an Adidas uh, uh, shoe. It's gonna take a lot for me to purchase a, a, a Yeezy going forward. Yeah, and I it's agree. not even about. It's not even about the. Um, I think I'm just off of the the models, man. I, the only thing I can see myself copping is a 700, maybe. I mean, I've had 750s in the past. I've gotten rid of them. I, I just, you know. I guess they're going to be. What's the what's the retail on those? What's the anticipated retail? Two thirty. Two thirty. All right. Yeah. So that that's on feet. There's that one image on feet of him wearing them. They don't look that bad. They don't look insane. This side this side view of it looks fucking nuts though. Yeah, it does. Yeah, man. I don't know. How many? You know what's kind of interesting is like all right. So you've brought it up before that. Uh, I mean, you haven't like claimed it, but you've kind of thought that like you know you think about you look at Yeezys in the three fifties. So those are kind of like replacing what the Air Force One is for a staple for shoe for kids, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so now, how many different models does Kanye have now? At least what you want to say six total. Three fifty. I don't want. We don't need to like really figure it out, but like no, so, it's three fifty V one V two. So yeah, yeah. So five hundred, seven hundred, seven fifties. Yeah, you got boots. Yeah, yeah, like okay. the not, yeah. So whatever. Okay, so if you look at that now, I'm just trying to compare what Nike did with the Air Force One, and then you know just to have alongside standing with it, which the the numbered Jordans. He's gonna have like a nice little pocket of different shoes that are gonna kind of I think compare to like the the Jordan the numbered Jordans and like the Air Force Ones and th- stuff mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. It's got it like I mean, how many different versions can you make of this shit? You're gonna have twelve versions of one shoe. No, I know. You know what I mean? But that's, I mean, that's that's what I think. That's why people are are kind of sour on 
the line because yeah. you gotta. I mean, even all right. Here's the we are Yeezys are four years old. Yes, from 2015 to now so they're about four years old yeah over four years because they came out the first one the first uh 750 came out february of 2015 i yeah. believe um it is just i i don't i just can't get behind what they're doing with you know like they i understand maybe they're limited in what they can do in terms of like when you when you say what what they're doing, what do you exactly mean? I I can't get behind them just continuing to pump out a three fifty. Whether it's like all right, we're gonna make a minute change, we're gonna put supply three fifty on this one. Or yeah, yeah, okay. We're going to you know uh, you know we're gonna make these reflective. Like it's like a- after a while, and and I think a lot of people, and and I have people that are like. You know, when I first started getting 350s, I was really like hyped. I was excited. Yeah, of course. You know, I was like, oh, and now it's, you know, and and I, if you buy something because you think it's exclusive, then it's kind of that's whack too, because you should just buy shit to me that you like. Of course. But um, that's the, our whole problem with this generation and the hype train. Yeah, it's like, oh man, this is limited. I gotta get it, and I. But I just feel like it's it's just play. I don't know if 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 I'm just if I don't like boost anymore. Or I just I'm just tired of like well I don't. okay so wait hold on let's break this down for a second so I because I'm on board with you I've I've been never I've never really been interested in these shoes in general just because of the their the dad shoe look like they're too fast yeah. for me I like clunky basketball you know that um, but what's really the difference between them doing the minute changes and stuff like this and then Jordan doing all the retros all the time well you and with the retro there are you know Jordan's pumped out thirty models yeah that's true so. But people only care about, you know, the first 12. Mm, not everyone. Not everyone, but for the most part, the same people that care about these 350s are going to care about those 12 Jordans. And what's now? For no, the most part. not because no because this is what I'm going to say, all right? And and granted, I think comparing Yeezy to Jordan is I think it's unfair to Kanye because we're we're talking Air Jordans have been around since 1985. Or yeah, you no, know, I understand the so difference there. You yeah, can't, I'm you not can't trying to put them up directly. You can't be like, all right, well, these Yeezys, what's the difference between these and what Jordan does? But what I'm saying is every Jordan is different. If you go the first four Jordans, right? Drastically different, I understand. One, two, three, four. Yeah. You know, the, the threes and the fours are very similar, but they're different. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you look at basically Kanye's put out uh, 350 and then a 750 and a 700 and a, and a 550 they're all different they are different they are they're, they they do different things but it just feels like it just feels like i think it the 350 is just like to me it's just played out well maybe because we're where we're at in life we're older we are so if you're, yeah, if you're yeah. older but if you're like 15 I can understand why you want. I've I've always said that. I said if you're 15 years old, I have friends who have kids who are like you know 12, 13, and and they want fucking Yeezys because yeah. you know once again, I mean it's it's a comfortable sneaker. At the end of the day, it's comfortable. Yes. But I there's certain sneakers that I just don't like want anymore, and I think a, a Boost is one of them. Yeah, I think a, a a Yeezy is just one of them. I, I think it would take a lot for me to say I'm going to spend three hundred and fifty dollars on a on a Wave Runner. Not my thing. Um, just not my thing. And just the same way I feel like Air Force Ones. I mean, I'm not. You know, I I just don't want Air Force Ones like that. I get so no. I I, I do agree with you. Uh, the comparison is is very unfair. But I did want to point out that the their model is just a very rushed version of what Jordan's doing right now with their retros. So like I understand that like they have the time and the legacy of that Jordan has created for those shoes. Mm-hmm. It, each of those shoes has not only different moments within the sneaker itself, but like you know the colorways different. Mm-hmm. Like certain pairs that he wore for a certain game get coveted because of just what he did in them. I understand of that. Of course. Um, but with these, it's like it's the same. It's kind of the same thing where it's just like they're rotating, changing minute things. It's like Jumpman versus the check. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to say that like he they're just kind of condensing what he did. Over the span of thirty years into mm-hmm. five, got you. Um, I don't think they're. Con- I don't think they're trying to condense. I think they're. Trying- well, you know, think- they're, they're like I- different touch here. Here's a new version. 
Um, like, because I consider the three with the check in the back versus the three with a jump man two different shoes. Okay. And that's kind of what like the V one and V two and V three are. Mm. I would. I would. Once again, I would. I would more. I would. Com- I wouldn't compare Yeezys to Jordans. I would compare them to an Air Force, like an Air Force, the Air Force series, whether it was Air Force yeah. Ones, Air Force Twos, because it's just it's just different. There's different changes on the Air Force, whether it's whether you have like um, all leather, yeah. patent leather, like different you know different qualities of the leather. Like it's different things. I I don't compare. Like I said, I just can't compare. The 350 to a Jordan one. No, I got you. I I just can't in my heart. I think they're just two different things. I'm no, I'm with you. I just it's just like the you know because people I because I've talked to other people about it. People have been like, yo, they're doing too much too fast. I'm like, no, nah, I man, they gotta catch up. That's well, they they gotta catch up, and and I think you know I, I also the way the world is right now, you have to strike while the iron's hot. Yes. So who's to say that in a year or two, kids don't turn on? Kanye is sear cooking us with the with the Yeezys when. Uh, the Jordan, I guess, was a uh, roast. <laughs> speaking of Jordans, uh, wait, yeah, wait. Speaking of actually, speaking of Air Force One, did you see that sandal version? I'm so sorry about that. That was so stupid. Uh, did you see like the little sandal sling back then that they made? Uh, you're talking about the uh, with the cut in the back. Yeah, that is atrocious. They've been doing Air Force Ones real dirty the past two years, bro. You, you got, when you have a shoe that is almost forty years old, yeah, you got to do something. You got to change. I mean, it's not for me. Or you don't have to do anything. I mean, look, ops are forever going to be a staple. As long as there's New York City, uptowns will be fine. You don't, don't need to. <laughs> I don't agree with you on that. No, I, really, why? I think you do need to change with the times. I think you need to try different things. I mean, I'm not. Once again, I'm not saying those are. Are something I would wear. I mean, but they're different, you know. So if you don't know what we're talking about, there's basically like think of a Croc that's an Air Force One. That's what this is. So yes. they <laughs> they made it like a slip on like sling uh, Velcro on the back. So your heel's exposed, but the front is pure heel Air is Force exposed. One glory. Gross. Yeah, this is a, this is a nasty shoe. No, but I think like no, because the I mean the Air Force One is so. Such a, a Harlem, New York staple mm-hmm. that you can walk in. I mean, any store in Harlem that sells sneakers has Air Forces. Of course, think, every, any store in the country that pretty in the much country has for sure, Air yeah. Force Ones. You don't need to touch them. All white Air Force Ones are fu- like they're for, no one's going to not buy those. No, we're not. You saying don't that. need to do this though. Is what I'm saying. But there's you know no you know why because I disagree because okay at the same okay I remember when the Fantastic Four the the Invisible Woman Air Force Ones came yes out, and that was 13 14 years ago uh huh and that changed the game on the way Air Forces were things that were being done to an Air Force was done. Yeah, if yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, the the idea because they kind of broke the fourth wall with you looking through the sneaker. Yes. Yeah. So what I'm what I'm saying to you is, you think like they can just they could just sit and be like, all right, we're just gonna make a black Air Force One, a white Air Force. No, they they gotta do dumb shit like this. They gotta make you know Air Force Ones that look like Timberland boot colorways, and you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It, it's it's because it's a staple. It's one of those like, it's you walk into a chain store. Mm-hmm. There are Air Force Ones there, okay? And so I, I'm not going to sit here and be like, nah, they're doing too much. Yeah, they are doing too much, but it's not <laughs> something I would they're ever doing, put on. They're doing so much. But I'm sure even at whatever they retail at, if you're able to get those on heavy discount, Nike is still making fucking money off of that shoe. Yeah, definitely. And that's the more, like, they can put out the most trashiest trash. It will go to an outlet, and then people will scoop it up mm-hmm. for $40, and they still will have made probably a $35 profit. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's, you know, it's not everything that everything that, that Nike and, and releases is not designed to fucking sell out immediately first day. Because if that's the case, then what would these stores have to sell? 
No, they you're still right. need to have shit in their stores. I uh, I've just seen them do so much weird shit to the Air Force One the past two years, like especially on all the women's models. You know what I mean? Where they like moved the fucking shit, the the uh, swoosh mm-hmm. down a bit, mm-hmm. and like all the yeah. I just uh, also, dude, they, I can't believe they made these in the black. <laughs> the the gold hit is nice around the swoosh, and the air is is good, but like, <laughs> like. <laughs> Is there enough fucking jokes about black Air Force Ones? Never mind the making them like a crock. <laughs> it's just so stupid. No, I, I, um. Where do you think all the air, the black Air Force One hate came from? I don't know if there's. I mean, I think because a lot, a lot of times people associate like an all black shoe with black people. No, I'm just they are. They, <laughs> no, they associate, they associate all black shoes with. I think like waiter shoes and like they're just very mundane. Well, uh, who has the joke? But someone has a joke about like uh, his girl kind of getting a fight like with someone outside, and the guy goes outside and he's seen that they're wearing uh, black Air Force Ones, and he goes, "Goes, nah, leave him alone. We don't need a fight with this guy." And she's like, "Why?" She's like, "Yo, he's wearing black Air Force Ones. I'm not trying. I care about my life." Oh no, I never even heard that. Bro. Yeah, someone never, got a joke like that. I never heard that, but I think Air Force. I think black for a long time. A lot of people. People prefer, it's so weird, man, because you have some people that hate black shoes with the passion of their life. Yes. And then you also have people that hate white shoes with a passion of life because they're like, I'm not wearing white shoes because I can't keep them clean. Yes. And then some people are like, I fucking love black shoes. And because I don't have to worry about keeping them clean. Right. I just rock them until they're dead. Yeah. I, I feel like all black Air Force Ones is just, no. I don't like all, and I and I and but I also don't like all white Air Force Ones. Oh, I love the all whites. All whites are clean as shit. They clean as shit, and then you wear them a few times, and then it's like, ah. Uh. Yeah, but you know that part of the reason why they're those are good and white is because they're so cheap and affordable. It's not. I'm not saying that like you can just beat them up. You know what I mean? Well, but I mean, they are something you can just run around in, and then you know, fucking get a coupon, save twenty bucks, and then another pair get of them shoes. Again? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I, don't, I, just, I, just, I just don't like it. There's only a few Air Force Ones in my lifetime that I've like been in love with. Yeah. In love and love. And most of the time, it's just like, whatever. Like, you know, but then 10, like 10, 15 years ago, I mean, 20 years ago, I was like, oh, I love, you know, Air Force yeah. Ones. Were, they were, most of them, some of them were fire. Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't know, man. We, uh, but one thing we're both in agreement on is these Air Force One uh, Crocs are gar. Baggio. They're the worst thing I think I've seen in a long time. These yeah. are real bad. Yeah. These are nasty. If I see someone outside in these, I'm going to point at you and laugh at you. You won't, Chris <laughs> won't because if they wear a black Air Force One, they probably fucking kill them. <laughs> now, next topic. <laughs> let's uh, let's let's fucking fly through some of these. Well, topics. speaking of black um, shoes, mm-hmm. the satin women's black toes came out yeah yo and, women's uh, shoes the resale on those are so much higher so so much higher than i thought they were gonna be they're yeah. nuts right now perfect storm man um so they retailed 160 um if you don't know what we're talking about uh there was a women's uh satin black toe shoe that came out so similar to the shattered backboard that came out recently that i got an L on um they're cranking out these satin shoes and i guess the public is really accepting them <laughs> they're like yeah dude bring up more satin yeah, satin. Uh, one of my biggest mistakes in the satin game was the uh, the uh, bread satin uh, ones uh-huh. came out uh, back in 2016. I was at Foot Locker uh, getting a pair of actual black toes and bread restocks. I was like, oh, let me just make a quick a couple quick dollars. Yep. And my man was like, you should go get the satins. I was like, man, I don't give a fuck about these satins. And I lost out on a lot of money yeah dude wow it's a thousand dollars right now yes man for uh holy uh, that's a women's 11 which i guess would be a nine and a half nine and a half so i i um for listeners out there yes i was able to get a pair uh size 10 and a half women's which is a nine men's and as i look at what the retail resell is on these i'm like this is uh insane these are (sighs) wait how much would you sell them to me for how much do I sell them, Chris? I I don't want to ruin our friendship. <laughs> I do not want to ruin because that's my size. I do not want to ruin our friendship. And I Chris. want these shoes. I I love you, Chris, <laughs> but um, 
I am not, you know, I'm not going to sit here and, and be like one of these disgusting resellers who are like, I'm only going to let these go for the high of $2,000, but I'm not going to let these go for cheap. Because why? Every now and again, you know, we're not all, we're not resellers, but every now and again you get a gift. And this is a you fucking gift. Yep, yeah, this you got This is a fucking gift. You got your rent this month with these bad boys. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, looking at StockX, I mean, uh, a size 10 and a half women's, the lowest X is 1,000. The lowest ask is one thousand and fifty five dollars for a pair of hundred and seventy dollars shoes. That's nuts, dude. It it's the perfect storm for people to go crazy on a sneaker because a one, it's a OG colorway. Yep. It's in the satin. Yep. And um and it takes the formula of probably the most popular uh colors, which is white, black, and red. When you could throw that in a sneaker, People go fucking crazy. So, all right. What are the best satin shoes with this included? I like the Shattered Backboard Women's. Okay. These are great. It's a classic color. Uh, now I'm trying to think of the other satins that came out. So you got, when it comes to satin, uh, Jordan 1s, you got the Shattered Backboards. You got the uh, the uh, Satin Royals, which were kind of like a regional release. Um, I th- I don't know if you can uh lump the Aaliyah Maze in there. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to make a quick look. This, these aren't satin. What the fuck are, are they? No. Uh, yeah. Hold. Let me see. I mean, these are definitely out of the. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. These are up there as far as best. Some of the best satin shoes. I think you can lump the Aaliyah Maze joints in there because it does have the uh. The back has the satin, and then like the check is like it's like a chenille. So there's uh yeah, so there's satin. Yeah, no, I would count those. I would definitely count those. I mean, the chenille on the check is just like a different kind of pop, but no, the back mm-hmm. in the front, yeah, definitely. And these royals look good. Yeah, damn, some of these are fucking, dude. Satin's so fire. Yeah, the 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 bread satin. I mean, I I'm to this day very upset at myself for not uh getting a pair. Yeah. Because even now, would you look at what the band satins are going for? And if you got a, if you got a, uh, if you got a size nine, you're talking forty five hundred dollars for a pair of satin band ones. Oh, I guess the purple earths too. You could count those. Damn, those are a pretty shoe too. Yeah. So. Fuck. Wow, I forgot about all these. When did these come out? Uh. I don't know, Chris, but I mean, if we're ranking them, like I said, I think the bread, the black and red satin ones, then I think the shattered backboards are number two. Yeah, I'll I'll agree with you. And then I think you can go, I think you can go the the bread toes, and then I think the Royals. I don't like the Royals the most out of any of them. Royals are just kind of solid. They're not, they're not anything like special, even though they are the satin. They're just like, oh, all right, I got you. These are cool. Now, here's the question I want to ask you. What do you feel about dudes? Because you know the resellers. Obviously, this is a this is a release that it's pretty much for the resellers to go ape shit on. Yeah, of course. What do you feel about dudes like pretty much camping out and fighting for women's shoes because they know they're gonna make a profit? Um, uh, especially in this climate of uh, just newly renowned acceptance across the board for many things that wasn't like say ten years ago. I think it's fine now. I mean. Saying you're camping out for a women's shoe, it's you know it's money focused. So it's like, no, I'm doing it for the money, dude. I'm not doing it for anything for any other reason. I think if it was ten years ago, people would get clowned on real bad. I also feel like uh, I also feel like it's it's okay because and when I say it's okay, bro, Jordan Brand literally made it's like oh these are women's ten and a half, but they're also a men's nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like Jordan Brand is sitting here saying, "Hey, you, dude, no, they know we want to wear some of the women's stuff." Oh, dude, I mean, you know how many guys I saw wearing satin, Saturn, shatter, shattered backboard. I, I tried to get those so bad, I couldn't get them in the price range that I allowed myself. Yeah, bro. Yeah, it's uh, it's very, now it's very um, it's very expensive. <laughs> I mean, just like I said, dude, I'm looking at I'm looking at this shit, and I'm like, I didn't know that these shoes are going for 
that obviously the price it's is going to come dude. down a little bit. Yeah. It's going to come down when people start getting their online pairs, but I think it's going to go right back up. Yeah. Because people are like thirsty for women's sneakers. <laughs> but you know, but here's the thing though. Women want men's sneakers. Yeah. And that's a complaint I get a lot of times from a lot of uh women who are listening to the podcast, they're 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 fans of of certain brands like sometimes you'll get a, a men's release and it's only and you only you'll get in there's no smaller sizes you know what i noticed when i was at so when i was back home and i went to the reebok store mm -hmm. um a lot of the more basic models so like i grabbed a pair of workouts uh, uh -huh. you know they only had those in unisex okay so basically what they did was because they made them in women's i'm sure it's just the same shoe they just rebranded it so instead of having women's they're like oh no it's just a unix sex shoe okay you can get it in like this size. Yes. No matter what size gender you are, you, you can get it. That's, in that that's size. the size you get it. Got so you. a women's, you know. So I'm a nine. So a woman would have to say, "I want a ten and a half." Okay. And I was like, "Oh, that's kind of interesting that they would do that because yeah. now it, it eliminates the whole gender thing of entirely." Course, of but course. they did keep the men's sizing, which is interesting. Yeah, that's not, I mean, ugh. It, it's so it's uh it's a tough thing because I, I mean me as a person like i what i do i like those yeah but um it also sucks because a lot of times these women releases don't have they have extended sizes men's yeah size, they don't but they not don't making yours they're not making a, a men's 12 they're not making a 13 and a half 14 for women yep <laughs> mm-hmm um, well, I think that's it. I think uh, there's nothing else really going on that we could talk about. I mean, shout out to Opening Ceremony for doing a collab with Skechers. That's, I guess, Skechers suck. Mm -hmm. Top five worst sneaker brands before we go. I can't think off the top of my head. You could do that one. I don't know. I... Um, Skechers is up there. Skechers. Uh, yeah, man, I don't know if I can do this now. We'll think about it in... <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it next time. I have my eyes closed right next. I don't want to look him in his face because I'm upset. Like, don't. Yo, top five, dead or alive, right now. Oh, man, I don't even know the answer to that myself. Oh, geez, Chris. <laughs> it's Skechers, and then it's Champion, and then it's Joe Budden. <laughs> we want to thank you guys for listening to Sub Podcast, episode uh, number 75. And 75. Se and 70. Yeah, 75. A and B. It's gonna be a two parter. Oh yeah, it's another two parter. So uh reason this is two parter is uh what you're gone. You don't even have to, you don't even have to tell the people it's gonna why we're why is it two parter. Well no, I'm gonna be in Portland. I wanna let them know I'm in Portland. Oh, all right, cool. And yeah. I'm I'm gonna be out here uh rapping. I'm in a battle rap competition. Yeah, he's gonna week. go to uh Detroit and go to the um what's that place called? Eight mile? Yeah. You're gonna go down to eight mile. What if I didn't know where eight, what if I didn't know the answer to that? You was like, What's that place called? I'd be like, I don't know. I would have figured out the shelter. See, I got there. Oh, Jesus. I don't Christ. always need you to help me. I can oh, get there by myself God. sometimes. <laughs> Episode seventy five A and B. Uh at not that cheney, uh C H E N E Y at L Z D three two five at subpodcast NYC. You can email us at subpodcast NYC at gmail dot com. Uh, yo, we also have a fucking phone number. I don't know if you guys fucking knew that, but we have a phone number you can call. It is 1-908-299-6910. If you, can, if you call, we will not pick up, but you can leave a voicemail for me and Lawrence. You can text that number, and we will look at it, and uh, go to the subreddit, uh, sub, uh, reddit, uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, reddit.com slash r slash sub podcast and also i want to give a big shout out to baron von fancy he made me and l um a print of his type if you don't know who this is go to at baron von fancy you've probably seen him around uh girls like his artwork a lot um he's the fucking man though i've done side projects with him and shit um but he gave us his stylings of the podcast name which is fucking fire. Yeah, it's fire. And we appreciate you for that. No, Darren. that shit is that shit is sick. Thank you very much. That you know, that just means the world to us cuz we we are growing and uh we hope to continue to grow to the point where President Obama comes on and talks about uh sneakers. <laughs> yeah, <Man>. let's get give... <laughs> Imagine me and you and Obama and, and 5,000 Secret Service guys. Yes. Uh, it's hilarious. With that being said, we're out of here. Uh, make sure you uh, rate, give us five stars. Donate to our, our Patreon. and um, Yeah, go to the Patreon. Go look at the bonus episode. We're going to have more. I'm going to be in Portland. I'm going to be on Nike campus getting one. While you're listening to this, I'm talking to a Nike guy right now with this fucking headset. So fucking go there and give us some shit. All right? All right. Peace. Peace.